If you're a hamster enthusiast, you likely already know about the largest species of hamster. But in case you don't, today we're going to be talking all about the European hamster, also known as the black-bellied hamster. European hamsters are native to a large range in Eurasia, including places like Belgium, Austria, Bulgaria, Russia, France, Germany, Romania, Switzerland, Ukraine, and many other places. European hamsters look very similar to our domesticated Syrian hamsters, with the exception that a European hamster is more closely in size to a guinea pig. They can weigh anywhere from 220 to 460 grams and be as long as 8 to 13 inches. European hamsters once lived in fertile, large grassland areas, but have since spread to various habitats like meadows, croplands, and fallow areas on farms. They've also been found to be living in close proximity to humans, and are more often found living in man-made habitats than natural grasslands. European hamsters prefer rich, deep soil, as they would live in complex burrows with multiple entrances and different chambers to live in, similar to how our other species of hamster would live. They're also omnivores, and their diet would consist of seeds, legumes, root vegetables, grasses, insects, and occasionally even small vertebrates. European hamsters are not a domesticated species of hamster, so if you were hoping to go out and purchase one as a pet, you're out of luck. I actually think it's a really good thing that they aren't domesticated. If European hamsters were kept in captivity, they would be treated just as poorly as the rest of the other exotic animals we've already domesticated, keeping them in small habitats with little ability to perform any natural behaviors. Think of it like this, thousands of domesticated hamsters barely have the ability to create burrows. I can't imagine many people being able to provide a deep enough substrate for an animal that's even larger. Another reason why European hamsters aren't really domesticated is because they can be quite aggressive. Many of you probably have seen the popular YouTube video of a European hamster jumping and hissing at some locals in Russia. A cool fact about European hamsters is that they're actually seed dispersers. This is because they hoard seeds and grains, and sometimes those seeds and grains get lost in the ground, which then ends up growing into a plant. Now, unfortunately, the European hamster's population has been declining drastically in recent years, and in June of 2019, the species was updated to being critically endangered. The European hamster population has dropped by 94% in France and more than 75% in Eastern Europe. This is due to females giving birth to fewer pups than they once did. Once upon a time, on average, a European hamster would give birth to 20 hamster pups in one year, whereas now they would only give birth to around six per year. If nothing is done, it's been said that the European hamster could become extinct within 30 years. It's not super clear as to why the numbers keep dropping, but the IUCN Red List suggests some of the causes may include habitat loss due to resident and commercial development, light pollution, as well as monoculture, which is when a farmer exclusively only plants one type of crop, such as wheat or corn. And since the European hamsters feed on these crops, this can lead to a nutritionally poor diet, which can lead to health issues such as protein deficiencies, as well as a vitamin B3 deficiency. And it's actually been found that a B3 deficiency can lead to abnormal behaviors in mother European hamsters. Just like all creatures, each and every one plays an important role in our ecosystem, and losing an entire species can damage the populations of other plants and animals. Fortunately, there are dedicated organizations and individuals working to help the European hamster and save its habitat. Here are just some of the programs that have been helping. Tier Park Berlin launched a project with its completed breeding and research station for the European hamster, and all of the pups born in Berlin will eventually be released into suitable habitats. In the Ukraine, a family of three European hamsters were released into the wild into the protected Tarantino Steppe in the south of Odessa Oblast as part of the cooperation of the Kiev Zoo, rewilding Ukraine and the Tarantino Steppe Nature and Ethnographic Park. And Germany's largest project, 
Feld Hamsterland, who have been helping by recording how many hamsters are left to plan protective measures for those hamsters in those regions. And thanks to the project, they also are able to pay cooperating farmers a yield fee for not harvesting grain, cultivating alfalfa, and planting rich flowering areas that the hamsters can seek out as a retreat and a food source. They've also created a breeding station with three males and three females, whose offspring will be released into the protected areas to help with repopulating the species. This group has an Instagram, and while their posts may be in German, you can still translate the text, and you get to see cute pictures of European hamsters all of the time. You can follow them along on their journey at this at here, and if you're interested in seeing more European hamsters, you can also view their live streams on their channel, which are so fascinating to watch. So if you're interested in helping the European hamster, look into donating to some of these organizations, or if you live in some of these regions, consider volunteering because many of these organizations depend heavily on volunteers. I really do believe that with the conservation acts, the European hamster population will slowly start to increase, and hopefully one day their critically endangered title can return to least concern. So hopefully you could learn something new in this video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!